Today's video, five supplements for cycling that actually work. There are tons and tons of supplements marketed towards cyclists, but here's five of them that do actually work, backed up by studies. Number one, creatine. This is one for the sprinters out there. Over to Will Gerling, pro cycling nutritionist, to explain a little bit more. It does work. It's gonna improve your peak power. It's gonna improve your 10, second sprints and obviously in turn your 20 second sprints it's going to improve your recovery between them you will gain some water weight but it doesn't matter there is research to show that the added weight gain does not outweigh the added power effects and it is amazing for vegans to help improve performance in particular who are lacking in creatine and also to improve recovery and preserve lean muscle mass in a calorie deficit which a lot of you might be doing for the summer it's very inexpensive only by creatine monohydrate. Number two, beta aniline. Now I actually used this back when I used to race. A teammate gave me some just before we went to breakfast before racing a tour series, and I was shocked to find that it has a really, really weird side effect. Over to Will to explain a little bit more. Beta aniline is a intracellular lactate buffer, so it helps prevent the buildup of that burn into your legs for one to four minute effort range, and it's pretty inexpensive as well. It is proven. You need to take it for four to six weeks to load and then just go into a maintenance. Ideal if you're doing TTs, uh, crits, road racing. Only side effect is paresthesia, which is a tingling. So take it with a meal and take it in smaller doses through the day rather than one large dose. Number three, nitrates. Now they can be in a few different forms, but the ones I've used were beetroot. Either beetroot shots or beetroot juice. It's an acquired taste. Over to Will to explain a little bit more. Nitrates gets converted into nitric oxide within the body, which is a vasodilator, which helps expand all our blood vessels to get more blood through and reduces the oxygen cost of exercise, allowing you to produce more force for less cost. Win. Varying amounts of use with the more amateur novice rider getting more benefit than the elite but the elite still get a benefit. If you're at the amateur end, you could probably take just one serving of 400 milligrams of nitrate two hours before a ride. And if you are more at the advanced end, you probably want to load it for two to three days, um, up to four days, twice a day of 400 milligrams up to the event. Typically sourced from beetroots or beet it shots, but you can just get like beetroot juice and generally high intake of leafy greens in your diet. Next one, sodium bicarbonate. Now, I've actually used this before for the first time right before a race, which was probably not the best way to do it because it's absolutely disgusting. It is quite literally sodium bicarbonate that you can buy in a supermarket, it's super cheap, put it in water and some squash to make it a bit more palatable. Sodium bicarbonate is an extracellular lactate buffer, so when combined with beta aniline is amazing and once again helps you push harder for longer without getting the build up burn in your muscle. You take it 60 to 90 minutes before your session of about 0.2 to 0.4 grams per kilogram body weight. I recommend about 18 grams for you. Take it with about 20 to 40 grams of carbohydrate 90 minutes before your session. Do test it at home on a turbo. It can cause GI distress. And if you're particularly sensitive, you don't wanna be out on your bike shitting yourself. Finally, last one on today's list, caffeine. Now this is probably the most common one out of all of them. Naturally, you'll find caffeine in coffee, but to get the performance gains that you want from it, you might have to be drinking or taking a little bit more than you realize. It's just a shot of espresso enough. Here's Will. Caffeine's an obvious one. You're all ha always having your cup of joe, your java, your morning espresso, your morning Nespresso. George Clooney loves you. It does work. It reduces your perceived exertion. It increases alertness and vigilance. It decreases perceived exertion and increases your pain threshold. It also improves force production and neuromuscular activity and increases endorphins. Caffeine's amazing, but to get those you need between three and six milligrams per kilogram body weight. Your typical espresso only has 70, 75 milligrams in. And if you look at like loads of other places like Starbucks where they've actually tested their caffeine per shot is only like 40 milligrams. So if you're a 70 kilo male or 75 kilo male or female, you need to be taking a triple espresso to get those performance effects. It takes an hour to peek into the blood and it takes six hours to reach that half-life to leave the body, okay? So if you take two espressos, that's 150 milligrams, 
six hours later, it's 75 milligrams in your blood still. Remember that. So there are your five supplements. Now, while some of these are natural, some of them are gonna raise your heart rate like caffeine. So be sensible, consult a medical professional before trying any. Everything on this list has been proven scientifically to work. I'll put the links down below in the description and the titles of the studies that Will used to get his information from. Let us know in the comments what supplements you use for cycling. Have we missed any really good ones? Please subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and thank you for watching.